When we talk about electric vehicles or EVs, it's easy to picture a future that's sleek, quiet, and emissions-free. Cities with clean air, highways filled with silent Teslas, and gas stations replaced by charging ports. It's the dream, right? A greener planet, fewer carbon emissions, and an end to our dependence on oil. But here's the thing. What if this clean image of EVs is just part of the story? What if behind that shiny new battery-powered car lies a much messier, dirtier reality? One that starts deep underground, far away from urban centers and charging stations. The truth is, while EVs themselves don't emit carbon dioxide when you drive them, the path to producing them, especially their batteries, isn't exactly squeaky clean. That green energy still relies on a supply chain built on heavy industry, high energy use, and most crucially, mining. And mining, as it turns out, is anything but green. So let's break it all down right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the battery. Most electric vehicles use lithium-ion batteries. These are made up of several key materials, lithium, cobalt, nickel, graphite, and manganese. All of these need to be extracted from the earth through mining, which requires enormous amounts of energy, water, and chemicals. And this isn't happening in some futuristic high-tech lab. It's taking place in countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo, Chile, Indonesia, and China. Take lithium, for example. Most of it is extracted from salt flats in countries like Chile and Bolivia, where brine from underground reservoirs is pumped to the surface and left to evaporate in large pools. It's slow, water-intensive, and incredibly disruptive to local ecosystems. In the Atacama Desert, where water is already scarce, this type of mining draws heavily from underground freshwater reserves, drying up wetlands and affecting local farmers and indigenous communities who rely on that water for agriculture. Cobalt mining, mostly in the Congo, brings another layer of concern. Not only does it carry an environmental cost, but there are also widespread reports of human rights abuses, especially child labor and dangerous working conditions in artisanal mines. So while the finished EV in your driveway might look sleek and ethical, the raw materials powering it could have a very different story behind them. Let's zoom out a little. Mining on this scale is not just about holes in the ground. It's a full-blown industrial operation involving roads, heavy machinery, chemicals, and waste. To get just one ton of lithium, you might need to move 500,000 liters of brine. To extract cobalt and nickel from ore, vast amounts of rock are crushed and processed, leaving behind toxic tailings that can contaminate rivers and groundwater. And the demand is only growing. As more countries commit to phasing out internal combustion engines, automakers are racing to secure supplies of battery materials. That means more mining projects, more land disruption, and more competition for already scarce resources like water. The environmental burden is being offloaded onto some of the most vulnerable parts of the world, places with weaker regulations, limited infrastructure, and communities that have little say in what happens to their land. Even from an energy perspective, the carbon footprint of mining can be surprisingly high. Many of these operations rely on fossil fuels, especially in regions where electricity comes from coal or diesel generators. So the irony is that in the quest to ditch gasoline, we're still burning a lot of fossil fuels, just upstream in the supply chain. So, does this mean EVs are worse than gas-powered cars? Not exactly. Over their lifetime, EVs still tend to have lower emissions, especially in regions where the electricity grid is relatively clean. But that's not the full picture. 
The green label many EVs wear so proudly often ignores the environmental and human cost of getting them on the road in the first place. There's also the matter of battery lifespan and disposal. Most EV batteries last between 8 to 15 years, depending on usage and climate. But what happens after that? Right now, battery recycling is still in its early stages. While some companies are developing closed-loop systems to reclaim valuable metals, a large percentage of used batteries either end up in landfills or are stored indefinitely because there's no clear plan for disposal. We could be staring at a future e-waste crisis unless that side of the equation catches up. Plus, there's the question of whether we're just shifting problems around rather than solving them. Instead of burning gas and polluting the air directly, we're now digging up massive quantities of minerals, displacing people, destroying ecosystems, and creating new forms of waste, all in the name of sustainability. It's a complicated trade-off, and one that doesn't always fit neatly into the green narrative we hear so often. That being said, not all hope is lost. The EV industry is evolving fast, and there are real efforts being made to clean up the battery supply chain. Companies are investing in more ethical sourcing, improved labor conditions, and stricter environmental standards. There's also growing interest in alternative battery chemistries, such as solid-state batteries or sodium ion, that may rely less on rare metals like cobalt. On top of that, Battery recycling is starting to gain traction. Startups and established firms alike are developing techniques to safely extract lithium, nickel, and other materials from old batteries so they can be reused instead of mined again. If we can turn that into a mainstream solution, it could dramatically reduce the need for new mining and cut down on environmental damage. So, is the EV push really green? It's greener than sticking with gasoline forever, sure. But it's not the clean break from environmental damage that it's often made out to be. The truth is messier. Behind every battery is a global chain of extraction, energy use, and sacrifice, often borne by communities far removed from the consumers driving those vehicles. It's not about stopping the transition to electric vehicles. It's about being honest about the cost and doing everything we can to minimize it. Being green should mean more than just driving a zero emission car. It should mean protecting water sources, respecting local communities, reducing waste, and rethinking how we consume and move. If we're serious about tackling climate change, we can't just swap gas for lithium and call it a day. We need to build something better, cleaner not just at the tailpipe, but at every step of the journey. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.